Well, I, you know, I think that having spent the majority of my working life within the old Bell system, yeah. uh, I think there was a, a culture and an expectation of community service. And I can't remember a boss that I had throughout my career who, when you sat down and went through an appraisal process with them, didn't bring up what are you doing in terms of, of, of community service? What kinds of things are you involved in? It wasn't, it wasn't a luxury, it was a, a necessity, and people looked at it as a necessity. So they expected that their employees would, uh, would, would filter into the community and be part of the community and give back to the community, and that was the expectation. When people did get involved in them, they liked it. And they got as much out of it as, as the people that they were volunteering for. So it was, a, it was it was an early and worthwhile uh, education. I started out in a, in a very large, probably the largest corporation in the, in the private corporation in the United States, and I worked uh, for 30 some years in that, in that environment. So I became very comfortable in large organizations, and I, 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 I think I learned very well how to, how to maneuver with inside of the corporations and to, and to do those kinds of things. So, when you take those kinds of skills, you might have learned that a place like AT&T and Verizon and apply them in, in, a, in a hospital setting, I think a lot of them are, are worthwhile uh, yeah. skills to have. Well, you know, at, at, at the time that the federal government was breaking up the old Bell system, that was a lot like the hospital industry of today. There was a lot of things going on, a lot of rapid change, and you had to move quickly to adapt to that kind of a thing. And I think in today's healthcare environment, it's a lot like that today because as, they, as these things come out and you as an organization try to address these changes, it takes time to address these changes. And sometimes by the time you finally figure out what to do with all these changes, there's other changes that have occurred. So it's a constant, yeah. it's a constant challenge to stay ahead of the changing environment that we're in today. Uh, I uh, joined the board of uh, Shore Health at Memorial Hospital at Easton in 2002. In 2004, I became chairman of that board and I'm still chairman of that board. And we, we obviously have changed, we've added hospitals, we've become a system of three hospitals today. But back in 2006, I was part of a team that negotiated an affiliation with the University of Maryland Medical System. It's the way smaller community hospitals are going these days. You have to become part of a, of a bigger system because the capital needs and the service needs going forward you need to be part of a bigger system in order to be able to have those things. Oh, I think it's working very, very well. I think if you go back to our original objectives of affiliating with the University of Maryland medical system, which were on the clinical side, number one, to improve the services that we have down here, number two, to bring new services that we don't have and bring them down here to the mid-shore shore area, and three, to attract the kind of specialists, the kind of doctors we need to provide these services down there and from the administrative or physical side, uh, fiscal side to make sure that we had the capital dollars to make the improvements that we need to make to provide uh, high quality, accessible, affordable health care. So if you look at it from those, that perspective of those four objectives, I think we've been able to accomplish most of those, if not all of those at this point in time. I mean, there's certainly evidence of improvement of services. There's certainly evidence of services that weren't provided down here before are now being provided. Because we have access to the School of Medicine at the University of Maryland, we have access to those specialists and we've been able to attract those people down here to provide healthcare services in our community. And from a capital point of view, we have become part of the University of Maryland capital structure and we've been able to go out into the capital markets and borrow the money at very attractive rates because we are part of that system. So I think uh, from my perspective, certainly, it's been a huge success. Ever since 2006, I've been chairman of the board down here and a member of the University of Maryland Medical System Board. But I'm also involved in the Midshore Community Foundation as the vice chairman. And up until recently, I was part of the board of Habitat for Humanity here and also part of the CASA of the Midshore area. It was the CASA of Talbot County when I first joined. At a it. big picture level, I think if there was one word that uh, defined healthcare in this country today, it's change. Change is constant in the healthcare industry. It's a, it's a very big part of everybody's life. It's uh, very expensive. Uh, it's um, changing constantly, not only from the, the service side and what we can provide to our clientele, 
but from the cost structure side of this whole thing. So there's, there's constant change going on in the industry. The thing that frustrates me the most is, well, there's two things. Number one is the, the rapid amount of change that we have to deal with all the time. <clears throat> and three, how long it takes to, to, to get to a, a comfortable position to make the types of changes you need to make. It's just, it's, it, it takes sometimes longer than you want it to take. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very much involved in, in all these, but there is a strategic planning committee of the board that uh, is responsible for a lot of those. And I sit in on that committee. I don't chair that committee, but I sit in on that committee. But they are the ones that are dealing with a lot of the issues that we have today regarding delivery of health care services. Yeah, there's a process underway right now to really kind of get a handle on what is the health care delivery system that we want to implement down here on the midshore yeah. to make sure that we get the best possible services at, a, at a, an affordable price to the people in the midshore area. And we're looking at that right now. And we're on schedule to uh, come up with a recommendation sometime in the spring of 2016 uh, will be the time when we will have put all of this together, looked at the recommendations, taken it out to the communities, talked to the communities, given all parties that have something to say about what we do, an opportunity to say what they want to do. And that's when the Strategic Planning Committee will bring it in front of the board and we will have a, a, certainly a robust discussion as to what the future sure. of Shore Regional Health is. Well, I think we're doing a, an incredibly thorough job of looking at all of the different aspects of what we're trying to do. Uh, I, I feel very comfortable with the teams that we've put together that are looking at that. I think we have a cross section of people on each one of these committees that are looking at these different service lines. It includes physicians, it includes executives, employees, uh, partners in the community. They're all sitting down and they're talking through this stuff. So it's, we're, we're getting a lot of input on this thing. and. Uh, once that's all put together, you, you got to come to some conclusions and you've got to uh, make some recommendations and some decisions. But I feel comfortable that we have a process in place that's going to give everybody the opportunity to be heard on this issue. And, uh, you know, I know some people may think that we, we, we have a, a preconceived notion of exactly what we wanted. That that's not true. I can tell you I am and, I, and the board is open to considering all what we're focused on is doing the best possible job we can. But, you know, we have a responsibility to look at all aspects of it, including the costs of these services going forward. And, and that, that's our responsibility as a board, and we'll, we'll fulfill that responsibility. Our, our system serves five counties in the Midshore area, and we have representatives of every county on our board, multiple representatives uh, on our board from every one of those counties. So. And it's, it's, it's not done by the University of Maryland, it's done by us. We have an executive committee that looks at that and, and vets certain candidates for the board, and we make recommendations to the full board, and it's approved by the full board. I think we're going to be able to provide better services to the peoples in our, in our communities, and I think we're gonna be able to provide many of them very close to their homes. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. And I think that when it settles in, I think people will be happy with what we will produce on this. I always ask is what do you think is the greatest misperception of either this process or the, the Shore Health system? Uh, I think it's that, that we, Shore Health, have a preconceived notion of what we're going to become and that we're being dictated to by the University of Maryland medical system. That's not the case, yeah. that's not the case. University of Maryland medical system is like Tip O'Neill. It believes all politics is local. And the decisions are best made locally. And they've, ever since 2006, they've felt that way and they've acted that way. And that's the way it is today. So our decisions are being made down here. I, I think that, number one, working together, I think we can produce a better end product, number one. And number two, remember that we are not in the business of, of of silencing people who have opinions and have uh, recommendations, we'll be happy to listen to them. And uh, hopefully they'll come forward and give them to us. These are people's lives we're talking about. This is, isn't a car or this isn't a washing machine. These are people's lives. So decisions we make are very important to families and individuals. So, you know, you got to get them right.
Yeah, I, I probably am, and, and, and I have a hard time saying no sometimes to things, but, you know, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. And, you know, when I reflect back on it, I, I really think I get more out of it than I give sometimes on these things. Yeah. And I think if people looked at it that way, I think more and more people would spend time volunteering and doing things in the community. Because I think for us to be successful in our communities, we need people to volunteer and do those.